Hey guys, welcome to another TensorFlow tutorial. Today we'll be learning about recurrent neural nets or short RNNs. RNNs are a class of neural networks that allow previous outputs to be used as inputs while having hidden states. So this means that we are working with a sequence here. And this is super powerful and with this we can use RNNs for many different applications like text generation, text translation, sentiment classification and many more. So I already have an in-depth tutorial about RNNs where I explain these slides here in more detail. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the theory then check out at least the first five minutes of this video because now I want to focus on the implementation with TensorFlow. So let's jump directly to the code. So here I already have some code and this is the exact same code as in tutorial number three where we used the MNIST data set and then we defined a simple um, neural net and then we defined a loss and a optimizer and compiled our model and then we trained it and evaluated it. So we did digit classification with this data set. And now the only thing we want to change here is to change the model and now use an RNN model. So this is not the typical application for an RNN. A lot of times it's used when we deal with text classification or text generation. But this example should demonstrate that RNNs can indeed be used for an image classification task. And you will see how easily we can create our RNN model with the Keras API. So as I said, when we deal with RNNs, then we deal with a sequence here. And in our case, we have images, but we don't have to change our uh, data set. We simply have to treat our images as a sequence now. So right now our images have the shape 28 by 28. So 28 times 28 pixels. And now we treat it as a sequence. So this means that we say one time step is one row in our image. And then we also have 28 columns. So this means that our input size is 28 and our sequence length is also 28. So again, this means we have 28 time steps in our sequence and in each time step we have 28 features. And now when we treat it like this, then we can simply use an RNN now. So now let's go ahead and define our model. So first let's define a empty sequential model. And the first thing I want to do is to add a input. So I say model.add and then keras and then input and then here specify the shape. And this is 28 by 28. So again, the first, um, the first number here is the sequence length and the second number here is the input size. And now um, we can um, add the RNN model. So there are different ones available and we, th we start with the simple RNN layer. So later I also show you two other famous ones. So for now, let's say model.add and then we can get this in keras.layers. So we already imported this here and then we can say layers dot and now we want a simple RNN model. And now the only thing we have to specify is the number of units. So the number of output units and this is also the size of the hidden cell. So there are of course a lot of more parameters. So I recommend that you check out the documentation for yourselves. So one thing that you should note is that the, by default, the activation function in an RNN is the ton H function. So let's in our case, let's try out the ReLU function. And now this is all that we need for the RNN model. So now we have that. And now as we 
want to do classification. So we have 10 different classes in the MNIST data set. So then we also, like in the other tutorial, we add a dense layer at the end. So we say layers.dense and then we want 10 outputs. And um, this is all we need. So we don't use an activation function here at the end, but then we must be careful and we must specify from logit equals true in our loss function. And now this is all that we need for now. So this is the whole um, sequential model that we need for a simple RNN. So first let's um, import sys and say sys.exit so that it runs only until here. So let's run the code until here and print the summary. So let's say Python and then the name of this file. So this one. Oh, and here I missed the equal sign, of course. So shape equals 28 by 28. So again, let's try it. And then here we see our simple RNN has this output shape. And I explain this in a second. And then we have the dense layer with 10 outputs. So let's have another look at the RNNs. So the output shape is n, so the number of samples that we have, and then 128, like we specified here. And what this includes is, so this is a single vector for each sample. And the output that we get is the output of the only of the last cell, the last time step. But this includes all the information about the previous um, time step. So this is all that we need. So we only need this last cell here. So this is why our output is in this shape. But you can also get an output of the shape, the number of um, batches times the number of sequences, uh, the number of time steps or the sequence length, and then the number of units. And we get this when we specify um, there's an additional parameter. And this is called return, return sequences equals true. So if we use this by default, it's false. And if we use this, then our output is in this shape. And this is, for example, useful when we want to stack multiple RNNs together. So for example, we can use the first one, which will return all the time steps. And then we use a second one where we say this is false. And then um, here we get this output shape. So again, let's have a look if that's correct. So let's clear this and run this again. And yeah, what I told you was correct. So the first RNN has this output shape because we said return sequences equals true. And the other one has only this output shape. And then again, we have our dense layer. So this might improve the performance of your model. So again, you can play around with stacking of multiple RNNs. So let's for now, let's just use one and then let's remove this and then train it and see if it performs well for this classification task. So again, let's clear this and run this. All right, so we see that our accuracy at the end is 97%. So our RNN indeed works well here for this image classification task. And now you know how you can set up your RNN with this simple RNN layer. And you should know how you can treat your input as a sequence. And now I also want to show you two other famous RNNs. So this is only the simple RNN layer, but there's also, for example, the LSTM or the GRU. So both are two popular RNNs as well. They both typically perform a little bit better than the simple RNN. 
and I think you don't have to change anything else. So the parameters are mostly the same and also the structure of the outputs is the same. So yeah, play around with this, this as well and try out the GRU or the LSTM. And yeah, I think that's it for now. And in the next tutorial, we learn how we apply this for a text classification task. So I hope to see you in the next video then. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel and see you next time. Bye.